Okay. So let's talk about Method Man, who said, fuck y'all kids and all of y'all that came to, you know, Summer Jam and, you know, didn't know who the hell they was. So Method said he will never perform a High 97 Summer Jam concert ever again. There were some people in the comments that said, um, hit the like button if y'all didn't even know that Summer Jam happened. The only reason why I knew that it happened is because my union and a lot of people that I work with work at UBS. So that's how I knew that Summer Jam was happening over a conversation. One of the guys asked some other coworker where they work in Summer Jam. He was like, I work whatever, whatever they got, whatever. So Summer Jam actually happened. And it says Method Man thinks his time performing at Summer Jam may have ended due to the widening of rap's generational gap. On Sunday, June 2nd, High 97 to the IG with some highlights from the 2024 Summer Jam Festival with reels from posts showing love to artists like Cash Cobain, don't know who that is. Lola Brooke, don't know who that is. 41 World, don't know who that is. French Montana still got a career. Anyway, Rakim, know who that is. Doja Cat, of course I know who that is. Sexy Red, why is she on a Summer Jam stage? Method Man and Red Man, yes, and more. However, Meth responded to High 97's reel, recapping his performance with Red and wasn't, and basically said that he wasn't satisfied with um, the response of the audience. Hold on while I play this video, but I had to turn the sound off because I don't want to get accused of copyright because it's one of the songs that they perform. So we'll just have that play while I, you know, read the rest of the story. So it says, the hip hop legend explained that the generational gap in rap had drastically widened and he no longer feels Summer Jam's crowd aligns with his discography. As a result, the Wu-Tang Clan MC asserted that he was never coming back. He said not our crowd at all, he began. Thanks again, New York, and the whole tri-state that showed up to the event, plus Pete and Ebro. That would be Peter Rosenberg and Ebro Darden. They said, I got love for you guys, but never again. At this point, the generational gap is, the generation gap, sorry, is, um, he said, it's too wide for him. So, now I'm like, unfortunately, I'm going to agree. And I have to say, like, I just hate, like, what a lot of these festivals and stuff has become, where a lot of people don't even know who a lot of these celebrities are. And to me, like, when I was a kid growing up, I listened to, you know, I was a fan of Wu-Tang, but there were artists within Wu-Tang. Like, I like um, Raekwon, ODB. I was listening to him the other day and just cackling at his um his sophomore, no, his solo album. I think I only released one album, if I'm not mistaken. But I was listening to ODB the other day because he shuffled on my Apple Music. Talking about all kinds of nasty sexual stuff. <laughs> and of course, I love Method Man, but I love when Method Man and Red Man would get together, you know, when they had the Blackout album and they did like, you know, whenever they would put out joint music. I always loved when Method Man and Red Man got together because I already knew like I was about to be in for some crazy production because I believe Eric Sermon produced a lot of their stuff together. So, um, and some of the solo stuff as well. So I like a lot of the stuff that they would put out. Now, they said multiple fans responded to the comment on IG and agreed with the timeless rapper, saying some remarks noted that Summer Jam has simply forgotten what real hip-hop is and pushed aside the genre's legacy acts to hone in on the newer generation of artists. And I feel like it's not just with hip-hop, but I feel like a lot of people have been doing that. A lot of y'all tend to think like, oh, let's find the hottest thing of the moment and give them a lot of the shine. And the people who are legends in the business, y'all just push them aside and act like that they can't be out here making a living, doing music, or whatever the case was. And then you look at a lot of these flash in the pan, these one-hit wonders, these sexy reds, and all these other people that just came out with a career because they popping on TikTok six months ago, and you put them on a stage, they don't have stage presence, they songs is trash, they don't know how to work a crowd or move around. It's just like, y'all thinking, let me just stand on stage and have 20 of my friends, you know, hyping up my music. And it's like, what the fuck are y'all saying? First of all, the lyrics is trash and you have no stage presence. So I'm actually with um, them on this. So one person said, keeping it a bug, hip hop never really embraced an uplifted legacy acts like rock or country. This is what a fan typed. When Journey or George Strait pop out, their culture makes sure to update the younger generation. That is so true because I remember like when I worked a couple of events that you would consider it white people music, you see generations. Like when I worked the J Billy Joel concert, I was shocked. Shocking did I tell you to see multitude of generations. It wasn't just 
people who are 40 plus that grow up because Billy Joel had a, his career spans 50 de five decades. I almost said 50 decades, 50 years, I was going to say, but five decades because he came out in, with music, I believe, in the early 70s. So you're going to get people from that generation that listen to his music. Also, you're going to get people that grew up with Billy Joel's music. So if you came, you were born in the late 70s into the 80s, whatever the case is, you knew who Billy Joel was and you come to their music. And I would see a lot of the younger kids that were in the audience as well listen, that listen to Billy Joel. So his music spans generations because I believe that white people pass down, you know, their music to their children and their children's children and their children's children's children. Whereas in hip hop, you would think that, you know, the older generations and my generations, you know, would be introducing people to Little Kim, Queen Latifah, Method Man, Red, Med, uh, Red Man, Salt and Pepper, LL Cool J, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Press Prince, Roxanne Shantae, like, why, um, you know, Foxy Brown, so many other people. Why weren't y'all introducing them to these, you know, artists instead of, you know, oh, well, I'm going to just let y'all discover. And then when you go to these places, y'all don't know who these artists are. So another person went on to say, I wish the rest of our generation would show up at this show. Another comment began, at High 97 Summer Jam is for one-hit wonders, not legends, because unfortunately, this young generation don't care about our generation. Rock Kim, Big Daddy Kane, etc. These kids don't know hip-hop. Busta gets on stage and does that same damn Chris Brown verse. And we promised um, Hook or Crook we would bring a festival to our city. Now, in 2008, that dream came true when the first Roots Picnic came to fruition. And they said, I swore we were doing Coachella like damage. My manager, Sean G., laughed. It was in a parking lot that held about 3,000 people, far from the 65,000 we have this weekend, LOL. I'm glad we stuck to our guns and not go festival and just throw the best names and charge all $2,000, as some of our uh, contemporaries do. I mean, no knocking them. I would have been like, no shade, but that's a gay term, so they're not going to use that. So they said, we played all those festivals, but when you get trapped in a name game, then you pigeonhole yourself and the pressure to just draw... and especially the WTF variety, keeps y'all guessing. I'm especially proud of our ability to pick them while they are brand new. Uzi, Willow, Migos, ASAP Ferg, Weekend, Diplo, Cuddy, Mac Miller, may he rest in peace, St. Vincent, g -Z, Macklemore, DJ Mustard, Chloe and Halle, Rhapsody, Blueface, ew, not Blueface, Mickey Guyton, I can go on. But at least they had a couple of names in there. I was like, okay, some of y'all do got the talent. Now, Blueface, yeah. Well, he in jail right now. I ain't about to get out soon. But anyway, so it says, all those artists were AO quests when y'all gonna have some real names instead of these nobodies on the bottom of the poster level. Now look at them. This moment was epic. And so um, the good thing is, you know, they gave people who had the potential a chance. And that's what y'all need to be doing. Y'all need to give the people that have the potential a chance to 
you know, get up there and show what it is that they have instead of just throwing a bunch of damn names out there and hoping for the best. And to me, the fact of that, you know, Method Man is not getting the respect that he should it's sad because me growing up is like, yeah, we know him as Method Man is like one of the most prominent rappers of my time. But I feel like now this new generation, y'all just know him as Tariq Lawyer from Power. So it's unfortunate that this is something that they're going through. Maybe what needs to happen, and I was just thinking about this. I was like, you know what? Since real R&B is dying, because I saw Amber Riley was talking about that recently, about how the industry is treating R&B and not really giving a, you know, the same platform they do these other pop acts, and the way they just kind of cast a lot of these real R&B black singers to the side and stuff. Maybe what we need is a throwback hip-hop festival that celebrates those artists, instead of trying to put them on Summer Jam. But then again, this is Summer Jam's fault because Summer Jam is affiliated with radio and radio ain't been radio in it since Wendy Williams went and left to do the Wendy Williams show. So that's the, and that's the last time I listened to the radio. Like I haven't really listened to it. So I couldn't tell you who's up on, on there doing whatever it is that they're doing. But I feel like also this is their fault. This is Hot 97, all their faults because these festivals only want to focus on who's hot at the moment because y'all want them big names and y'all want that money. Y'all want that quick, you know, payout instead of really giving a platform and bridging the gap between old and new. So it's the older generation, but then you pass on to the new generation. And these younger kids are so goddamn disrespectful in the fact that y'all don't respect the Busta Rhymes, y'all don't respect Little Kim, y'all don't respect Method Man and, and Red Man, and don't realize, not realizing that if it wasn't for Method Man and Red Man, if it wasn't for Little Kim, if it wasn't for Busta Rhymes and stuff, y'all would not have these other artists that are coming out today who were clearly inspired by them but ain't giving them they damn flowers. So I like the idea of at Once Upon a Time, I think with the latest album, Busta Rhymes tried to bridge that gap while bringing a lot of the younger generation onto his new music, and nobody cared. So I say all this to say, you know what? I love the whole festival thing, but the way that High 97 and Summer Jam and stuff is, maybe Summer Jam need to go by the wayside. I don't know anybody who really cares about that festival anymore. That festival ain't been, ain't been popping in years. And maybe what we need to have is similar to what LL Cool J had last year, where he had a festival that celebrated not only, you know, he was the headliner, but of course he had a lot of people that came out that were from that generation that he would bring on the tour with him that performed and do all the stuff. So um, let me know what y'all think. I say all I have to say. Let me know what y'all think of this story down below.